Okay, these are your constitution guided notes. So a constitution is a set of laws that the country is governed by. The U.S. Constitutional Convention, five delegates from 12 states were sent there to revise the Articles of Confederation. Um, the five South Carolinians below were present and helped form the new constitution. Charles Pickney is one of those gentlemen. He provided a lot of ideas for the constitution, such as the State of Union speech that the president would give, and he also felt that the president should serve as the commander and chief of the military. Eventually, he'll serve as a senator, the House representative, and governor of South Carolina, and he also hosts George Washington's first visit to South Carolina. So here are just a quick overview of the five different elements that were talked about during the convention. Um, these can be found in your constitutional convention stations, but they're also listed out here for you. So from 1781 to 1789, the United States was governed by the Articles of Confederation. This document gave a lot of power to the states and was too weak to meet the needs of our new nation. Um, and as a result of that, the Constitution is going to be drawn up in 1787, ratified in 1788, and ultimately put into effect in 1789. The Constitution was the highest law of the land. Um, and two groups of people are going to, going to argue over whether or not it should be ratified. Um, and those are going to be the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists. The Federalists are going to oppose ratifying the Constitution without the Bill of Rights being added. Um, in South Carolina, these are going to be the backcountry folks who opposed a stronger federal government. They feared that the elite would have too much power and that the national government was located too far away. The Federalists did support a stronger central government. Um, they, these people are going to be from the low country and they felt that this would be influential in foreign affairs and establish better trade relationships. And here's just a quick overview of those two groups one more time. Ratification. So the Federalists ultimately promised to add a Bill of Rights um, and James Madison drafts those first 10 amendments, which are the Bill of Rights, um, in order for them to be ratified and put into effect in 1789. Here are some constitutional principles. And so in order to create a better government, we are going to put limits on the power of government. The first is popular sovereignty, and this means that the power is going to come from the people. The second are individual rights, and this is the protection of our unalienable rights in the preamble and the Bill of Rights. Federalism just means that our government is going to be split into a national government and a state government, and this is spelled out in the 10th Amendment. And these are the three ways that power is split. There's delegated powers, which are powers given to the federal government, reserved powers, which are powers given or reserved to the states, and concurrent powers, which are powers shared by the federal government and the state government. Um, and again, just some of the different powers granted under each of those governments. Separation of powers is going to establish three separate branches of government and they can check um, each branch to make sure that not one becomes too powerful. And there's a chart there that you can look at. The legislative branch is the first branch we're going to talk about. Um, this makes the laws. House of Representatives and the Senate are a part of this branch. Um, one, the House of Representatives is based on population and two, the Senate is um, equal representation. So two senators per state and their job is to pass laws. The judicial branch is going to interpret the laws. Um, they're gonna be the national courts and the highest court is the Supreme Court. And then the executive branch is the president and his cabinet. Um, and their job is to carry out and enforce laws. Checks and balances, like I mentioned a moment ago, are going to keep each branch of government in check um, and help them not get too much power. And an example we talked about in class was that when a bill is becoming a law, it must be passed between both houses of Congress and then the president may sign or veto it. And if the bill is vetoed, then it goes back to the Congress and they're able to 
um, kind of revise and change things. And that's what I just mentioned a moment ago. Here is some examples of um, the way that our different branches check each of the other branches. Limited government just means that um, the government is going to be limited in order to protect the individual liberties and prevent our government from becoming too powerful. And then the Bill of Rights are the first 10 amendments in the Constitution, written guarantee of individual rights, and defines our individual liberties.